Hey guys, it's Emily. Welcome back to The Casual Puzzler. We are doing a very poor science experiment. I am going to be trying four different methods of how to keep a puzzle together to hang on a wall. Currently, my only method is to use pin two puzzles, which are plastic puzzles that have a designed frame so you can easily hang them on the wall. But I wanna be able to showcase different brands. I have a lot of different spaces on my walls in this studio where I can hang a puzzle and it'd be an awesome option to be able to switch out the backgrounds every once in a while. So today I'm trying four different pretty common methods to keep a puzzle together. We have painter's tape. This one is the Scotch Blue painter's tape. I have a 1.5 inch. It's recommended to use a two inch and to also use an acid free painter's tape. I'm not doing that today. Uh, I actually had cases of this at our house because the previous owners were contractors. So they left behind a ton of painter's tape. So I'm just using what I have, but again, acid free is supposed to be less damaging to your puzzle and more of a long-term solution. But we're just using what we got. I got some painter's tape. Next off, we have puzzle glue. This is kind of pricey for what it is. It's $14. You can use it up to 3000 pieces. I feel like it's pretty accurate based on what I've used so far. Um, so so definitely a, the most expensive option in this haul um, and there's also different variations of glue so please let me know your favorites because I have some big thoughts on this and I'll let you guys know my opinion at the end but definitely the most expensive and we will be trying this out today next we have the puzzle savers by buffalo games they have a Again, a ton of different brands. I just chose this one because they're easy to get on Amazon. I got a four pack, it was around $18. And then finally, I wanted to do like a hack option. So I use contact paper. This is the most inexpensive one I could find on Amazon. It's $3.99 and it has this fun wood grain pattern on it. Um, and maybe I could have gotten a more expensive one that had a better adhesion, but we are just trying this one out today. Now we're going to go back in time and me trying all four of these methods. I did not do the best at doing a scientific experiment because I do not have the same control. Three of the puzzles are the same brand. There's one that's not, but it is what it is. You can see the learning curve and then we can see what it looks like hanging on a wall. I believe I have all the pieces here to tape my puzzles according to the Karen Puzzles video. The items that we needed were pieces of foam board. I ended up just cutting one into twos because this one was starting to show a lot of wear so I don't use it for videos but I think for this it'd be great and I like having the smaller ones because I feel like giant pieces of foam board can be kind of tricky to maneuver. I have some scissors, several cases of tape. She also mentioned to have some goopy gone for the scissors because some of the tape adhesive could end up there and can get all goopy, but I'm just going to be using this tape. It actually looks a little bit smaller surface wise than what she had. I think she said she used two inch and this is a little bit smaller. This is 1.4 inch. So I'm going to do more rows than I needed to, but that's all right. I have plenty of tape. There's like 20 or so rolls in here. Um, so we're gonna get started. Uh, she said the first thing you need to do is to measure out the pieces to know where I need to divide the sections. So I'm going to do that um, and cut this all out. I'm gonna speed you up so that way it doesn't take forever in the video. that's as good as it's gonna get. I mean, this puzzle is pretty good about staying together, like this is a whole section. So now I'm going to flip the pieces. Um, it looks like I can probably just go like this and it would be fine. So I'm gonna do that instead of using the foam board method. Um, but we're just going to start this process of taping things first one way and then other the other. So it's gonna be double taped. This seems like a really long process. Uh, so let me see. There's a couple sections that are really small and so I can only really put, go over it once. But already that feels like pretty secure. Let me do a big section and see how this goes. Uh, 
kitchen is done. And this took a pretty good amount of time, um, but it is definitely really sturdy to have it all together. Um, one thing I did notice that it was easier for me to just measure out the tape, which you probably saw at the end, than like trying to lay it down with the roll. Um, so I just measured it out and then and then sliced it and then put it down because that way I was able to get a straighter um, edge because, I mean, I know no one's going to be looking at it on this side, but I don't know, something about making it like a nice clean edge. So it looks a little wonky on some parts, but it, I mean, it works perfectly well. So I'm gonna move that one aside and continue on. I only have one, two, three, four, five pieces left. Four of them are the big ones though. I've only done two of the big ones so far because it is time consuming. But I will see you back here in a little bit so I can give you my final thoughts. All right, so I do have the whole puzzle together and it was definitely a learning curve. Um, for me, things I took away, get the bigger tape because I had one thing of big tape here from just house projects and so much faster than using the smaller ones. Also, I do think it's easier for me to measure and then cut versus just like laying down and then cutting when it's still on the roll. I hope that makes sense, but it was easier to make it go straight because it did in a couple spots, especially on this one, like it, I didn't go completely in line. And you can see that there's like a couple that are a little bit too long, but I can't pick it up because it does take some cardboard with it. So me measuring and cutting was easier. It was definitely tricky to get it in a straight line a little bit. Um, so I do enjoy this, but I do think it would be so time consuming if I had an even larger puzzle. But I think it's like completely sturdy quite a bit. Like I can be pretty rough with it and I don't see it coming apart anytime soon. Um, but we'll see, time will tell. I do think it is very effective. Um, I don't know if I do it for every single puzzle, but I do like that I can now just store it inside the box. I'm just going to read the instructions. It looks like it's just supposed to peel and then stick. That's what it says to do. So let's open this up, see what they look like. Um, I might be doing a disservice because I'm not using it with a Buffalo Games puzzle, but I want to try it with more than just their stuff. So they do have instructions right here. Step one though, flipping the puzzle over, which I think, oh it is, it's the perfect size. That is exciting. So let me see if I can flip it over without it falling apart. They again are, oh yeah, there we are. Puzzle is flipped, here we go. And now step two is with the picture side down, lay this guy and then trim if necessary. So it says to go up to the edge and it says to overlap. So I'm gonna see where this needs to be cut. Just right, I'm just gonna cut a smidge and then like do like a straight line. I had like a paper cutter upstairs. I bet I could have used that and I would have made sure like I had a straight line. I'm not the, I'm not the most, I'm not the best with scissors. So, all right, here we go. Cool. And how many are in this thing? You have one, two, three, four, five, six sheets. I'm guessing I'll need three. So it definitely, it would fit two 500 pieces, which is pretty cool. Yeah, three will be perfect. So let me make it easy. Line it up with the one I've already cut and then cut accordingly. Oh, and there's a grid on the back. They did mention that in the instructions. There's a grid on the back so I could use that to help with my cutting skills. You can tell I was not straight. <laughs> So now it says peel off the back adhesive 
and apply the sheet to the puzzle back. Do not apply sheets to the picture side, clearly. Um, using the score line, which is this dotted line here, you can use it to align and apply one sheet onto the puzzle back at a time as you desire. Okay, we will see how well my lining up skills are, but hopefully it's better than the tape method. So I kind of want to just do like half exposed. So I'm going to line it up to the very edge, you can go right there. There's so much surface area which is nice, and then I just go over it. Oh, this is way easy, at least for now, we'll <laughs> see. Okay, so one side is on, there's another half that still has the paper on it. Oh, okay. Probably should have taken off at least this part. Okay. Ooh, that fit perfectly. Go me. I'm just like trying to make it super secure. All right, one well, done. Let's go to the second one. There we go. This one has, oh no, it's a little bit long. Let me see if I can trim it real quick before it completely goes down. This one's lapping a little bit more than the half inch that it says on the instructions, but I don't think it's going to hurt it at all. All right, using my rolling pin, I'm just going to just kind of roll over it. <laughs> Fingers crossed that it works. Okay. Oh! Whoa. This seems very secure. Um, and it was so easy because it was like big, thick pieces. This actually works really well. And I wish, I don't know if I showed you how crumbly this puzzle is, but. You can't even like pick up two pieces at a time. So the fact that I can pick up the whole entire thing, this is pretty great. Next, we are trying puzzle glue. There are a ton on the market. This one that I got, I'll link down below. So many different brands come out with this. They have ones that are liquid. I have this one here that comes with Aduka puzzles. That's powder that you mix on your own. I do want to do like a whole separate video on puzzle glue specifically. So let me know if you're interested in that. For some reason, this one here is the method that I'm like most worried about because the other one, you can't really mess up the front at all. This one can mess up what it looks like at the end. So wish me luck. I'm going to read the instructions. A few things on this one. It says it's non-stick hands, bright and clear, quick drying and safe and non-toxic. This one is made in China. Um, it says first step is to place the puzzle on a horizontal desk, which I have. Second is to apply the glue evenly to the front of the puzzle and then let it stand for one hour. So we're going to try this out and see how it goes. There is this, this little seal here. This doesn't really smell too much, but I'm just going to, let's see, put it down and is it, oh, it is coming up. Oh, I couldn't even tell. Yeah, I can't even see it. So, I mean, that's good, but it also makes it so I can't tell which spots I put the puzzle glue on. Oh, I guess I can see if I go like this. Hopefully I can get this on film, but oh yeah, a little bit. You can see there are streaks. I'm gonna try my best to not get those, but you can definitely tell like when I'm sitting here looking at light. Um, so I wanted to show you that. But I'm going to continue this method and see how it goes. I 
I got it all done. Um, a few other point tip things that I noticed while I was doing it. Um, it did pick up on that one section. It's like one piece that just has like a corner coming up. I feel like I can fix it once it dries down. I'll be able to put it back in its place once maybe it's a little bit more tacky. Um, I am surprised that like you can't see it whatsoever when you're looking at it straight on. Um, I was worried about that and I was also for some reason, I'm sure it's something that they formulated into making this product, but I was worried that it was going to affect the coloring, like it was going to smudge or get weird with the wetness on top, but it's not. Um, it looks completely fine. I am curious to see how well it dries and if it dries really stiff. I'm very curious. I don't know, am I only supposed to do one layer? We'll see, we'll see how it goes. So I'm gonna have this dry for an hour and come back and see what it looks like. All right, so it is the next day. I want to give this plenty of time to dry. When you feel it, it feels like a very gritty puzzle. Um, it's not quite smooth. And when you look at it from like certain angles, you can see like a little bit of texture, but it's nothing that I could probably even show you. It just looks like there's a film on top of the puzzle a little bit but when you're looking at it straight on i really can't tell anything is on it however i don't have high hopes of it being very secure so that it doesn't fall apart just because it is such a thin layer and i couldn't quite tell how thick the glue is supposed to be we're just gonna see how i can pick it up and we're just gonna try it out oh it's stuck oh no <laughs> it's stuck to the cardboard hold on Oh no, in some spots it is, I glued it to the board. Oh crap, oh no, and then the pieces are coming off. Let me see if I can maybe wedge the scissors underneath to get the glue off. There's that. Uh, 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 okay. This part. So yeah, I can pick it up completely but I can see that it's going to break apart in some areas. So I kind of want to try putting another layer on to see if that helps to make it a little bit more secure. I mean, some areas definitely look better than others. I feel like the side over here, maybe I rushed it a little bit more, is not as secure. Um, but oh, there's definitely like some major seams that want to break apart. So I'm going to try one more layer and see if that makes a difference. It could also be the glue. I mean, there's so many different variations out there. And again, it could definitely be just me, not me being, not knowing what I'm doing. So this time around, still, I, mean, I think I got everything. Um, it looks like some areas definitely look a little bit more filled in than they did the first time, especially around the edges. So we're just gonna let this dry and see if this improves anything. Can I have you move? Sit here. Come on. Let's see how it is. It's been, I wanna say like three hours later. Um, I'm glad it's not tacky because I feel like it would be covered in fur right now. But let's see how it's looking. Oh no, ah, there's still some spots that I had gone over. And so the glue seeped in and it's now stuck to the board although maybe that's the point so that way it has like a little bit of a backing again i feel like you my expectations are wrong am i supposed to uh, oh no okay oh no oh, i got my finger <laughs> this is a mess it still doesn't seem as secure as the other two options but i mean i can pick up the whole thing fine i do think it would need some type of like backing to uh, feel a little bit more secure, um, but it definitely this having the two Works best, but I know if there was like stress points like if you're using like clips or something to hit, hang it up Like those pieces would not be together for very long. I feel like I'm going to need some assistance on this one Let me know your thoughts and suggestions down below to see how this method is supposed to work um, And if you've had any good success with specific glues, let me know We're going to attempt the contact paper. It looks like this is actually wider than the actual puzzle itself, so there is going to be some cutting involved. But first things first is I need to flip this over, which 
I don't know if I'll be able to do on its own. I may have to use, oh, well, I might be able to. Let's see. We're gonna be very bold and just try to flip it. Yay! Okay, that just makes my life so much easier. Um, we're just gonna measure this out and try it. I didn't read any instructions, so we're just gonna hope for the best. Okay, so it looks like on the inside there is a grid. We're just gonna attempt this and figure out how I can make it work. I feel like I need like something to mark it with, with like a pen. Now I am just going to cut my size out. I feel like this is going to be like really finicky. <laughs> um, we're just going to cut this out. First I'm gonna cut it away from the roll because this is just rolling up on itself. Okay, is it straight? Not at all. <laughs> I'm just gonna go back over to see if it's at least straight enough. Because I feel like right now I'm just like trimming. It's like when you're getting like a really bad haircut and then just like looking at you and then like cutting off one side and then trying to match it on the other side. That actually happened to me once when I was getting a haircut and it turned out way shorter than I was expecting. So I'm expecting the same result right now. Okay, this will work. It's a little bit on the too short side, but like just enough that it won't stick to anything. Like it's still gonna have good coverage on the puzzle. This definitely works. I like this. Now, for this method, it is thinner than the Buffalo Games, the puzzle savers, but it works. You know, if you just wanted a quick solution, I feel like this would be very easy, very cost effective to just like put in your frame and have it be fine. Um, I don't know if I would trust it on the wall like this for like a huge amount of time. Um, but I think if you're just like not playing with it and not flopping it around, it would hold a little bit better. So I have all four of my puzzles put together and I'm going to attempt to hang them. Now some of these methods may be better if they were like in a frame or actually glued to a board. I'm just using command strips because I don't want this to be like a huge ordeal each time I want to do this. So I'm going to use command strips. I also saw that you could get little hooks that are like similar but has like a hook on it so you can hang them on the wall. You can do it that way. We're just going to use this and put it on the walls because I just want to do the easiest way possible. Plus I already had these on hand. So I'm going to use the command strips and try to attempt to hang these puzzles on my wall, see if they actually make it to the wall and stay there on their own. Now these may not be strong enough to hold them up, but we're gonna see what happens, okay? <laughs> this may be just like sacrificing my puzzles. Hopefully not, but we'll just try it. and they, are, they have been tested and put together. Here are my thoughts and my ranking for these items. So my least favorite one was this guy here, the puzzle glue. I don't see me doing this again. However, there are so many different variables that would make this effective. One is the glue itself. There's so many different options at all different price points. So I'm interested to learn which one is your favorite. So let me know down in the comments. But for me, I had a hard time seeing it when I was applying, so I didn't know how much I was putting together. As far as instructions, they really didn't give me any to go by besides just like swiping this on the puzzle. I did read later that maybe you should use like a credit card to make it even, um, but I couldn't quite see where I put it, where I didn't put it. Um, the texture of the puzzle just feels like it has like a little grit to it now, but it did not stay together well. So once I hung it on the wall, there was a lot of stress points and it actually broke apart. So. Don't think this is my method of choice. Again, lots of different variables of user error, but also maybe the glue error. So please give me some help with this one. 
In third place, I am putting the contact paper. Even though it was really quick because of the amount of surface you can have, I don't think this is a good long-term solution because once it was on the cardboard, it you could see that it wasn't quite sticking to the puzzle very well. However, again, there's lots of different variables as in maybe I shouldn't have gotten the cheapest contact paper, but I wanted to have an affordable option. And so, I mean, it will work in a pinch. And so I think it'd work if you had it in a frame or if it had some type type of option in the back of it to give it a little bit more support. I think it would work and keep the pieces together, but I don't know if this is my preferred method. Again, lots of different variables. Please let me know the contact paper you like. And the second place I have is the painter's tape. It is, I feel like, the most secure one. Like, they all seem really sturdy. I could probably, like, be really rough with it. Um, but for me, one, time consuming. Um, there was a little bit of a learning curve. I'm just not the best at like keeping things, I guess, in a straight line. So it was very time consuming. It got my scissors all gunky. I'm definitely going to need to use some type of goo gone. I liked it. It definitely is the most secure. I feel the best about putting it on a wall and leaving it there for an extended period of time. And with the other options, I probably could have divided it into sections to keep it in the boxes too. But I liked how easy it was to do it with this and know that the puzzle was still in pretty good good condition. I was expecting this to be the most cost effective option and it really isn't. Um, I was looking on Amazon if I didn't have cases of painter's tape in my house. It's about six dollars a roll and I would probably go through one roll for a thousand piece puzzle. I was pretty close to finishing up the roll. I did use some of the two inch that I had um, so I think it would be like a whole roll for a thousand pieces. So about six dollars a puzzle. Not the most inexpensive option but still relatively affordable if you're trying to just get some wall art on your walls. And then my favorite method is actually the puzzle savers. I understand why so many of you have purchased it through my Amazon links uh, because it was really effective, really easy, and it still felt really secure. I felt like there was like a little bit of a sturdiness to it. Like when picking up the puzzles, I could be pretty rough with it. It definitely felt like it would, it could hold its own. And I do like that I was able to get two uses if I was to use five hundred piece puzzles. Now I'm not going to have a big space for a thousand piece puzzles all the time. So being able to switch out the 500 pieces just to change it the background is probably the most cost effective option, especially if you can get the four pack for $18. So I do think this could work also if I wanted to keep puzzles in sections and just do like one section at a time to put back in the boxes. I can see it working that way too. Again, a few different other brands to try out, but I really like this one a lot. And I will definitely use these again. So those are all the methods that I tried to put puzzles on the wall. Let me know if you like this style of video. I definitely wanna try out different puzzle glues. So again, leave me your recommendations down below. Please let me know what I did wrong in this video. It was a lot of learning and a lot of experimenting and I felt like I did a lot of things wrong, but I had a fun doing this and I like that I have some options to put in the wall. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.